Giant Robo The Day the Earth Stood Still was directed by Yasuhiro Imagawa. This guy's name isn't going to be familiar to a lot of people, but his work should be, at least in tone. The last time he made a work, to my knowledge, it was also inundated, strangely enough, with giant robots and potentially racist stereotypes. It was called Mobile Fighter G Gundam. Super Asia and be champion of all! <laughs> that was a fun show. Giant Robo, on the other hand, is based off of a long running manga created by one man named Mitsuteru Yokoyama. He didn't only make Giant Robo, he also made, cl made classics like Tetsujin 28 and Sally the Witch. This is the guy who created the stereotype of the little kid with the giant robot. And Depending on how far we're willing to stretch the definition, this guy is possibly also the creator of the Magical Girl stereotype. Giant Robo The Day the Earth Stood Still takes place in a future yet to be, which is currently shining in the glory of a new energy revolution brought on by what's called the Shizuma Drive. The Shizuma Drive is completely clean, it's recyclable, it's basically free energy in a can. And while you would think that such an invention would cause everlasting peace and warm fuzzies, it's instead set the stage for a gigantic clash between two opposing forces. On the one side, you have the rather sillyly named Big Fire Society, an organization composed of mysterious individuals who want to dominate the world. On the other side, you have the International Police Organization's Mighty Experts of Justice, all vaguely Asian stereotypes who fight against Big Fire and who have, and who have some sort of superpower to their name. Fighting alongside the experts of justice is prepubescent Daisaku Kusama and his pet giant robot. They fight crime! Uh. Crush them! Go, giant robo! By the way, if you get a strange sense of deja vu from looking at Giant Robo, it's because this is where Beast Boy got the idea for Cyborg's really weird design in that one episode of Teen Titans. I don't know about you guys, but when I sit down to play Japanese video games or watch anime, it, it feels a lot of the time like they're trying to go all out from scene one. And there's nothing wrong with that, but the problem is how the show ends up getting paced. We start with Bayonetta fighting on top of a falling cathedral, and we end with her surfing on, on an angel on lava. We start with a giant robot with two heads, and sorry, with a giant robot with five heads. We start with an MMORPG, and we end with dating our little sister. There's nothing wrong with spectacle, unless you're dating your little sister as a result. But the thing is, again, after a while this all becomes a bunch of white noise. Which is why Giant Robo's use of spectacle is so important. Even when Giant Robo simply has its characters sit down and gab at each other for a couple of minutes, it's still captivating. You still care about these characters, and it still works. This is a show that's completely confident in simply putting away what should be its titular attraction on the shelf for a good five minutes while everyone else goes around and does their thing. And the key to this whole thing is there's always something happening. Even if the characters are talking, there's a proverbial bomb under their chair. And you're just sitting beside yourself waiting for that sucker to blow up and cause massive amounts of carnage. And that's another thing. A lot of the appeal from this show comes from the actual human characters, not the giant robot. Giant Robo himself most of the time feels like a means to an end, at least more so than a character. The real appeal comes from the humans running around at his feet. There's also something to be said about the image of a man cutting things apart by snapping his fingers at them. His name is the Fabulous Fitzcarroll, by the way. That's, that's how he introduces himself. The Fabulous Fitzcarroll. The 1950s were weird, man. And the greatest thing is, Giant Robo is completely straight-faced in betraying all of these fabulous characters. The show doesn't even consider for a single moment that a man named the Fabulous Fitzcarroll might be remotely silly. During the intro, we see a group of men wearing orange traffic cones on their head with little angry faces painted on, pledging their allegiance to Big Fire. 
They are a serious evil organization in spite of the traffic cones. They have the sparkling robots proven. And when we see Giant Robo crying, it's not silly, it's not weird. You're right there crying along with them. Someone sat down with a typewriter and thought, hmm, the world needs more blue-skinned, muscle-bound women with gigantic clutches. And she's not wearing a sarashi because it'll sell Dakimakura, she's wearing a sarashi because she's from Asia. It's camp, people, and it works. It's thumbing your nose at the Dewey Decimal System. It's thumbing your nose at good taste. It all just somehow comes together and you actually care for these people. It doesn't matter how many explosions are on screen because, well, after one explosion, you've seen them all. It's the reason behind it all, and, and Giant Robo gives these characters a reason. And that's where its greatest strength lies. Now thinking back on it, this was also my first encounter with Daisaku and Giant Robo. Yes, the first day of the incident, of the seven days the world would never forget. Unfortunately, the camp sensibility might be Giant Robo's greatest weakness. You still have to buy into the notion that there is a very, very dangerous murderer named the Fabulous Fitzcarraldo going around. You still have to buy into the notion that this one character is a walking mask wearing a cape. It was apparently indestructible. This is a flaw in Giant Robo if there ever was one, unfortunately, and as a result, not everyone may be able to buy into it. It just might prove to be too silly for some people. In spite of the silliness, and in spite of this being a show about a giant robot, Giant Robo still works by virtue of its humanity, by virtue of its human characters. Giant Robo feels like something that hasn't been seen in a long time. It feels... It feels like it has heart. Giant Robo The Day the Earth Stood Still is available in a 3 disc collection set on behalf of Media Blasters. It also comes with an extra DVD titled The Ginray Special, which contains three OVAs created during, the, created during the 90s as an attempt at keeping interest, as well as funding, in the Giant Robot franchise. Honestly, I have a hard time recommending those, but if you're going to buy Giant Robo, chances are it's going to come with that DVD anyway. It's easy enough to ignore. With its high-flying adventure and occasional bouts of rather bloody violence, I'd have a hard time recommending Giant Robo for anyone under the age of 13. But seriously, man, you gotta check out the fabulous Fitzcarroll. That guy is awesome! Now if you'll excuse me, I need to go make a phone call.